Thank you so much for joining me for this video, which is all about protecting connections between igniter wires and extension wires from damp grass or rain, or rather the possibility that we might not need to do this at all. This is a subject that first came up in my forum a few years ago, where professional fires were saying, you don't need all these elaborate connectors that we're using, just stripping and twisting the wires together is fine, making sure they don't short out with each other and that you don't need to protect them from the weather at all. And this is at complete odds with our instinct when it comes to electrical connections, wire and water. So to test that out, last year I did do a quick video where I submerged a spring connector underwater and the igniter fired absolutely fine. So the professionals do know what they're talking about sometimes. However, for this video, I'd like to look at this in a bit more detail. Today's cunning plan then involves repurposing a piece of waste plastic from the recycling bin. I have four igniters that I'm going to fire from my 4Q firing system. If I just freeze the frame so I can show you what's happening here. In Q number one, the connection is simply stripped and twisted wires, left completely bare. Although I have staggered the joint here just to make sure that they're not going to touch each other and short out. In Q2, I've done the same thing, but covered these with a bit of tape. In Q3, we have the current forum favorite connector, the spring connector. In Q4, we have my favorite connector of the moment, which is the Vargo connector. I'm not just gonna get these slightly damp, I'm actually gonna submerge them entirely in water. These are all well and truly underwater then. I've given them a good tap as well to make sure there's no bubbles in any of the connectors. Let's see how we get on firing these. What we're checking for here is that the igniters do fire okay. Also that there's no unexpected results. For example, if you ignite Q1, it doesn't set off all four Qs because they're somehow connected by the water. So let's see what happened. No problems firing any of these. So it's true, they do all work underwater. They don't short out, they don't fail, and they don't cross ignite anything else either. The only failure in this test actually was a side test that I'm doing, which I'll cover in a future video. And it's another failure to light Visco, where the Visco is shoved simply down the shroud of an E-match. For my second test, I'm going to fire two Qs. In Q1, we have two igniters connected to one Q, and these are wired in series. And in Q2, we have two igniters also, but these are wired in parallel. As you can see here, in both cases, I'm simply stripping and twisting the wires together. I'm leaving them bare, just making sure that they're not shorting directly with each other. And then I'm covering this entirely with water as I did in the first test. Okay, let's see how these fire. So again, we're looking to check that they do fire, that they don't fire other cues, and that everything works as intended. And no problems here either. Everything fired as it should. You may have noticed here as well that I'm using some E-match to Visco widgets. These are the type that do require you to tape the Visco into the widget, otherwise it will simply come out. But all of these ignited fine. So this is another good way to ignite Visco if you're using E-matches. However, this is something that I'm gonna cover in a lot more detail in a video coming up fairly soon. In conclusion then, as you've seen from these tests, everything fired as it should. So to answer the question of whether you need to protect your igniter connectors from damp or rain, the answer to that is no. It should go without saying, but I will say anyway, that your firing system and your fireworks themselves absolutely must be protected from damp or rain. I heartily recommend putting any firing system you've got in a case, and fireworks can be protected from the rain or damp with cling film or bags. It was interesting as well to see that simply stripping and twisting the connectors worked absolutely fine as well. In fact, this is how many professionals work. They say that the sheer amount of connections that they have to run means it's impractical using lots of connectors and stripping and twisting uh, therefore is a proven method of doing it. So that was interesting to see as well. And finally, I will say that just because you don't have to protect these from the damp doesn't mean that you shouldn't if you've got time to do so. A very valid point made in my forum today actually was that if you leave any type of metallic connector out in the damp, it will start to corrode. So if you're intending to reuse connectors like this, then certainly protecting them from the damp will save problems later on. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.
Goodbye.